What's up my friends? Dustin Stelzer with Electrician U. Today's question from the YouTube audience is, wondering if you can speak on two hots on one white. Example, one neutral being used by two 20 amp breakers or one 20 amp and a 15 amp breaker. Thank you for your videos. So this is actually a really good one. Say that we have a multi-wire branch circuit. A multi-wire branch circuit is typically like a piece of Romex with a black hot conductor, a red hot conductor, and a single white neutral that both of those uh, two hot circuits essentially are sharing that one common neutral. So we call this a multi-wire branch circuit. In a lot of older houses, you're gonna see almost every circuit in the house is run in 12-3, you know, black, white, and uh, red. So a lot of different circuits are sharing one neutral. And when you have a black circuit and a red circuit, two different phases, sharing a neutral is not that bad as long as everything's balanced. Uh, then you don't have any kind of like excess buildup in that neutral, there's no problems really. But once you add a multi-wire branch circuit where both of the hots go out on the same phase. So say uh, the black conductor is hooked up to a black phase and goes out to a plug, and the red conductor is also hooked up to a black phase and they're both sharing a neutral, you're actually gonna double the amount of current on that neutral. So there's some weird stuff. So anyways, say in this situation, uh, say that we have a multi-wire branch circuit. We've got our panel coming in. We've got our black uh, circuit that goes out to a receptacle. We have a red circuit that goes out to a receptacle. And then they both share a neutral that goes back to the panel. This is okay. So we have uh, rules that make sure that you know these two breakers are not independent. We need to make sure they have a common handle tie so that they both trip at the same time. Um, but so it's essentially a 220 circuit that just happens to be connecting the neutrals in the middle. Now with current flow in a neutral, current's not going to flow in a neutral where there is current canceling each other out. So if uh, current travels in this circuit. Uh, black and red are 220 volts. So when there's a pushing on one, there's a pulling on the other. So uh, around this whole circuit, black to red, there is this pushing and pulling. It's really strong. Um, but also within each one of the 120 volt circuits, we have a pushing and a pulling and a pushing and a pulling. So while the black is pushing out, the red is pushing in, but since we have these two different circuits on the 120 side, we have a pushing and a pulling coming in. At the same time, we have a pushing and pulling that's happening over here. So because there is current coming in during that cycle and current that's going out during that cycle, it actually cancels out any motion. So there's no current flowing. So that's why you would put your ammeter on this and you would test zero amps because there's not actually current flowing. The current is flowing through both of the loads rather than through uh, either one of the loads. Now, this is the case on a completely balanced system. If we have a 10 amp load that is exactly characteristically the same on both sides, on you know this load down here and this load, two of the same exact fan with the same exact wire and everything in perfect condition, which would never happen. But say we have a 10 amp load and a 10 amp load. In this multi-wire branch circuit, we're gonna have 10 amps of current that's on this circuit and 10 amps of current that's on this circuit. Now, my premise for what I'm about to go into is saying that this neutral actually goes away and is no longer utilized when you have this situation, when you have a perfectly balanced load, to, uh, 10 amps on each side. What instead happens is you have a 220 volt circuit where everything goes through both loads. You're doubling the amount of resistance on the circuit. So now there are two loads in a 240 volt circuit rather than one load in one 120 circuit and another load in another 120 circuit. So let's look at this a different way. So if we draw a diagram of all of this, so say we've got uh, a 220 volt circuit. So this was one of our receptacles, right? We have a hot that goes to this receptacle uh, and then has a neutral that comes off of it. We have a hot that comes to this receptacle and a neutral that comes off of it. This is our multi-wire branch circuit. So 
what we're saying here is that we've got, uh, if we use Ohm's law and we figure out we have a 120 volt circuit, and let's say that each one of the loads is a 12 ohm resistance. That shows us that there is 10 amps of current flowing through there. So 10 amps equals 120 volts divided by 12. If we're solving for amps, we use Ohm's law E over R, voltage over resistance. So because there is a 12 ohm resistance that is in this circuit, that is what, when we connect 120 volts across it, 10 amps of current is going to flow. That's what Ohm's law is saying. That's gonna happen in both of these circuits. However, in this neutral, there's no current that's going to flow anymore because the current that's going this way is canceling out the current going this way. So as current is trying to go this way and trying to go this way, it's not going anywhere. They completely cancel each other out. So that means that there still has to be a path for the circuit to be able to, to, to run loads, to have current flowing through it. So the current actually goes through both resistances. Instead of it being a 120 volt circuit through a 12 ohm resistance, we're now doing a 240 volt circuit through two 12 ohm resistances, meaning we have 24 ohms of resistance. If you check the math out on that, it's still gonna be 10 amps either way. If we have a 120 volt circuit with a 12 ohm resistance on it, 10 amps of current's gonna flow through that. If we have a 240 volt circuit now, without this neutral, we have 24 ohms of resistance, we're still gonna have 10 amps of current flowing through. There's gonna be 10 amps flowing on this one and 10 amps flowing on this one. So if you were to go test, uh, at the panel next to the breaker and clamp on, you're gonna have 10 amps on red and you're also gonna have 10 amps on black. So it still looks like it's two different circuits, but it's essentially a 220 volt circuit now. So that same two pole 20 that you're using or two pole 15 or whatever, or two single pole breakers that are both 15, it's the same amount of current running through them. It's just taking a different path and it's going through both loads at a 240 when there is no neutral involved or when there is a neutral involved and there's some kind of imbalance, we're gonna have an imbalance amount of current going through there. So let's get into that next. Now, say we have the same multi-wire branch circuit, but we have a 10 amp load on one and we have a 15 amp load on the other one. So now there's an imbalance. Well, a neutral is always gonna carry the imbalance of a circuit. So in this situation, you're gonna have 10 amps of current flowing on this black. You're gonna have uh, 15 amps of current flowing on the red, but you're gonna have five amps of current flowing on that neutral. It's gonna carry the difference between the two. Everything's still gonna go through the 240 volt circuit. It's just that the imbalance current is gonna go through the, the neutral. Now we have the exact same diagram as the last one, but you'll notice that the values are a little bit different. We've got 10 amps here, we've got 15 amps here, we've got five amps on our neutral, and you'll see that our resistances are different. So once we connect 120 volts across a 12 ohm resistance, naturally 10 amps is just gonna flow. That's what's gonna happen. If we connect 120 across an eight ohm resistance, we've lowered the resistance, so now more current can flow. So now we have more current. We have 15 amps flowing through this circuit. So if you notice what's happening though, is that we've got the back and forth happening here and at an equal and opposite time, we've got in the same direction, current is going out and back in both of these directions, which means current is overall going out and back in the 240 volt circuit in the same exact way. So if we have five amps that's flowing here, we have 10 amps flowing here, 15 amps flowing here, is like some of the 10 amp current that's not getting to travel on here going through this circuit? Or how is there five amps? If there's 10 amps coming on this circuit, how is there only five amps? Where's that other five amps going? So because these are, equal, are, are uh, opposite in magnitude, we've got 10 amps of current that flows out and we've got 10 amps of current that flows out this way. So there's 10 amps of current flowing through this 240 volt circuit, for sure. It's just that there's an additional five amps that's flowing through at the exact same time through this circuit because there's less resistance. So the total 10 amps is actually taking this whole path through the 240 because it can't take this path through the neutral anymore. So it has to take its path through the 240 volt circuit. So we get our 10 amps when we test our ammeter right here and we test this one wire, it's gonna show 10 amps. But because we have an extra five amps of current through this uh, circuit, you're gonna show 15 amps on this side of the circuit. 
that 10 amps is the same 10 amps that is part of this 15 amps. It's just that there's now an extra five amps that is going through this circuit as well. So we add the five amps that's traveling on the neutral and the five amps that's traveling, you know, through the hot as well to that 10 amps. And that's how we get 15 amps. So it's always because of the resistance that there is any kind of resistance, impedance, reactance, anything like that that's gonna be the thing that determines how much current is gonna flow. We don't just like push amps to stuff. Amps are drawn once we connect a voltage across, it, uh, you know, from two points across something. And depending on the size of that something, the amount of resistance that it offers to current flow, that determines how much current is actually gonna start moving in the circuit. So that is why we have on an imbalanced situation, uh, the imbalanced current is being carried. It's actually in the full 240 volt circuit. The full 10 amps is going through on both sides. It's not 10 plus 10. When there's a pushing on a black, there's a pulling on a red at the same time. They're not both pushing out. Otherwise you would have 10 amps and 10 amps. You'd have 20 total amps on that 240 volt circuit. Just always remember in a 220 environment, you've got a push on the black at the same time you have a pull on the red. So that's how 10 amps can go on the black at the same time that same 10 amps is flowing on the red and then back and forth like that. And then we just have another half circuit where there's just happens to be an extra five amps and only that five amps is on this path. It's not on this path. Hope that made sense. All right, so moving on. Now what if we have two single branch circuits? So instead of having a multi-wire branch circuit where we're sharing one single neutral, if we have two uh, individual branch circuits, like you know, most of the time you're gonna have, we have a piece of 12-2 that goes out to this one, a piece of 12-2 that goes out to this one. Well, it's the same thing, if you think about it, where the combining of the two neutrals are coming together, they come to a single point and then there is a single branch of that wire that leaves. Same thing was with a multi-wire branch circuit. We had two different conductors that came together at a single point. So in this circuit, in this example, where we have two 10 amp loads, or well, it doesn't matter, two 10 amp, two 15 amp, we have, uh, let's say that this is a 10 amp load. We're gonna have 10 amps on this conductor at the same time for this piece right here, we're gonna have 10 amps. And over here on this piece, we're gonna have 10 amps and 10 amps. We'll just say this, this is a 10 amp, sorry. So there is neutral flowing on just these portions, but once it meets in the middle, these two tens cancel each other out because they're uh, opposite in magnitude. They're both trying to go, one's trying to go forward and the other one's trying to go backwards. But just keep in, in mind that Current flows on the neutrals and then stops flowing at the neutral where it reduces into one single conductor. So let's look at that whole single phase thing again. It's the same thing that's happening. We have two whites that are coming in to a single point. This white is touching, this is all just one point. So yes, we would have on here, we'd have 10 amps flowing on the hot, 10 amps flowing on the neutral, 10 amps flowing on this neutral, 10 amps flowing on this hot, but back here, because these two cancel each other out, we have no current at all on that neutral, but we would still test 10 amps here and 10 amps here with our multimeter. So it's essentially the same exact thing, but that's why current doesn't flow on a neutral because it only flows if there is an imbalance in the overall amount of all the circuits of everything that's going on and it carries that imbalance. Now let's look at one more example. What happens if you were to double up uh, like I said at the beginning of this video, what happens if you were to double up uh, on two black phases when you share one neutral? So if you ran 12-3, a black and a red out to two different loads, but instead of the red going on a red phase, what if you ran it from two black phases while they were sharing a neutral? It's interesting. So say we run a black conductor, we got 10 amps on it out to a plug, we got another black conductor coming off of another black phase breaker that has 10 amps on it. Well, we're actually pushing the same direction rather than pushing 10 and pulling 10. So it's still just 10 amps over the 240 volt circuit. We're pushing 10 amps and 10 amps. So that means between this phase, there's actually 20 amps of current that you're gonna test on that black phase. This, the entire black phase right now is pushing 20 amps at one point because it's the added of both circuits. But if you take one of these and follow the path, we have 10 amps flowing on this conductor We'll have 10 amps flowing on this conductor up until this point. We'll have 10 amps flowing on this conductor 
and 10 amps flowing on this conductor up till this point. At this point, current is flowing in the same direction backwards. So we have our loop going this way and we have our loop going this way. So both of the, the currents on this neutral are adding together. So there's twice as much current now on that neutral. So while you have a 10 amp circuit and uh, on your breaker, you know, say we had a 10 amp breaker or something like that, it'd be okay because we have 10 amps on the circuit. And then this other one would be 10 amps on this circuit. But the neutral coming back would have 20 amps worth of current on it. So that would be twice the amount of the actual breaker that we have on the circuit. So it's a really, really dangerous situation if you run multi-wire branch circuits and you don't make sure that they are complete or that they are on two different phases. If they're on the same phase, you're gonna have a problem and you're always gonna have doubling up of your neutral. So hope that helps. Uh, let me know if you guys have any other questions. This year I'm doing all questions, going to YouTube comments, Facebook comments, Instagram, Discord, Twitter, Reddit, Facebook group, Facebook page, TikTok, like all the places. So just uh, ask some questions or you can email support at electricianu.com if you've got questions too, if you want me to do some other videos. Thank you guys so much for your attention. Love you crazy people. See you in the next one. Descant music and video.